Good morning or afternoon or evening. Thanks for tuning in to um, Morning Devotions. I appreciate you taking time to spend some time in God's Word. And hopefully it will be fruitful for your day and days ahead. We're starting something new today for the end of the week. Just doing a short series. And we're not doing a whole book. We're just doing Joshua chapter 4. And it is a, a chapter that is filled with lots of um, uh, nuggets for spiritual growth. And uh, before we jump into that and read it, though, I have a question. And here's the question. Are you a lover of history or not? Again, you can just answer that to yourself, or if you've got people there, you can talk about it. But are you a lover of history or not? Now let's jump into the book of Joshua. Just to kind of set it, for most of you know that Joshua is a book that tells of how the Israelites conquered the promised land, or how actually God conquered the promised land for the Israelites. Probably the most famous passage is toward the beginning of the book. I believe it's chapter 6, is the fall of the walls of Jericho. And we've had uh, all sorts of, we've had popular songs, and we've also had um, uh, movies. Uh, it happened one night. It uses that as a, a comical motif. And we've had uh, Bible school songs and camp songs about it. So it's a pretty famous passage. But um, equally as important, maybe even more important, is Joshua's sermon to the people of Israel at the end of the book when he's an old man and has done all that he can do as a general. And that's Joshua chapter 24. And um, I'm going to read uh, several verses starting at verse 5. And this is what it says. Then I sent Moses and Aaron. I f afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there. And I brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness. A long time. You know what's so interesting about this passage is Joshua is speaking to a generation that had not lived in Egypt. They had not seen with their own eyes what God had done. But in another sense, they were just as much a part of what God had done in Egypt in the wilderness. You might say it was, there's a fancy theological term for it, you, it's their salvation history. And if you were to ask an Orthodox Jewish rabbi today, how many Jews crossed the Red Sea? He would answer, all of us. And the point is, is that God's actions done in the past are as much in our present as in what was done in the past. In other words, for the children of Israel standing in the promised land, listening to Joshua, they too crossed the Red Sea because they benefited from God's actions there. That's also true for us. The Red Sea is not our formational event, though it's also important for us. The uh, escape from Egypt, the exodus from Egypt is also important for us. But our formational event is the cross and resurrection. And if someone should ask us, 
how many Christians or how many of Jesus' disciples were at the cross. In one sense, even those that had run away, in one sense we could say we all were. Because Jesus died for our sins and affected each one of us. And how many Christians at the empty tomb? We all were. Because Jesus was resurrected for our lives. So when we read scripture, we need to realize that it's not just a distant, musty past that we have no relation to. It's our life story. It's as much a part of our life story as our childhood years, as our teenage years, as our years in adulthood. Because it forms who we are as children of God. So as you study the Bible, don't just look at it as sometimes people look at it as trivial pursuit, finding certain details or or just look at it as studying history. But look at it as your family record and life story. Because God did those things, the cross and the resurrection, the proclamation of the gospel, the exodus and the promised land, and the prophets, all of them, God did as much for you as the people who were present at those events. So, I want to end with a question. What can you do today to remind yourself of your personal salvation history? Let's pray. Lord God, I, we give you thanks that you freed the Israelites from slavery and freed us. We give you thanks that you saved your disciples from sin and you saved us. We give you thanks that in your resurrection you promise new life to your disciples and to us. Help us to live today with, the foref with that joyful news in the forefront of our brain, of our mind, of our soul. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, be hope-filled today. Stay strong, and God bless.